Hi everybody, sorry um, uh, in the hotel room here the internet connection was kind of a little weak so I have to redo it again so line was cut off, cut off. so sorry about that so uh, anyway I'm back here hopefully it will not cut off again um, so uh, welcome again to TWR Facebook Live uh, I am here in Paris, France um, so just first of all I wanted to again say to everybody that uh, I'm really really happy that uh, people are sharing a lot the experiences that people have been sharing a lot and a lot of people um, benefiting from uh, these sharings so so that is I think it's very very important that um, I read most of uh, all of your comments and, uh, and just to see that how everybody is really active engaged and practicing to see that it's just uh, it's wonderful so thank you thank you very much and also once again you know sharing uh, the website, uh, the Facebook Live, and uh, helping us to outreach. So I appreciate it very much. Um, first, I would like to share a little my my own experiences. Um, so, as I you know fly from San Francisco to Europe, um, it was a long flight, and uh, just arrived yesterday. To Berlin, so I, as I arrived in Berlin, of course, a long flight and it's just as uh, not yesterday. Sorry, a day before. So that's how I get confused here. So I, as I'm sleeping, so in the middle of the night, at around three, four o'clock, I w woke up, uh, and uh, as I woke up, and I trying to get into my practice back, and um, so my. Uh, practicing in basically the sense of uh, integrating uh, in space, uh, integrating with the light. Uh, so basically the practices of clear light, just trying to dissolve any sense of discomfort, any sense of physical, uh, some, uh, how you say, very strong sense of uh, solidity, concreteness trying to dissolve that into the space and then going back to this going back to sleep and uh, I have nice very very nice kind of uh, s slept very well and also the experiences of sleeping was very light and then I walk up walk up again and then this during the waking up then also I began to have some thoughts of course since the experiences was beautiful so I could not should not analyze but cannot help to analyze or cannot help to reflect, self-reflect and um, so I begin to feel like uh, you know some images of just interesting image of like thinking of my, my mother so what is the differences between my mother who actually gave me the birth who accommodated my existence who uh, hosted me and uh, who allow to you know uh, me to come in this world uh, who have supported to do that so basically she a period of time uh, she hold me in, in her and then she allow me to come to exist and she gave the birth and then I'm thinking maybe what is this like a space the sky, the sacred, sacred sky, or the sacred space uh, of element, which is also in many traditions. Sometimes we look at this as a mother, the sacred sky or the sacred space. It's like a mother. Then I'm thinking that also the sacred sky and the sacred space did the same thing like my mother did, who accommodated me, who. Uh, allowed all the atoms to come together, all the energies to come together, my consciousness, my mind streams to come together to form my identity existence and then who allowed to give me, uh, give a birth to me and not only who allowed to give a birth but who also 
still accommodating me in that very moment I'm, when I'm reflecting my dream. So I can never be out of this sacred space. I can never be out of this light. I am in it. I am that light. I am that space. I am totally inseparable. It's like my mother. My real mother and this sacred space, there is no differences. I think many higher teachings like uh, Dzogchen teachings like in Xiangxu Nianju, in uh, one of the very important Bern Dzogchen teaching, Xiangxu Nianju, it's that's a metaphor it gives. It says uh, the Kunji, the base of all, it's the mother. It says a Ma Pu Tsao. Uh, in my Wonders of the Natural Mind book, I talk three different chapters, talk about the mother, uh, the child, and the energy, Ma, Pu, Tsao. And so, so basically these experiences of totally being one with the space, can never be separate from the space, is, was really like a beautiful experience. So. So I was trying to kind of remind to everybody sometime that during many, many, many people are sharing your experiences, one of the things that it seems like a struggle is that always we're trying to f fix something. Right? Always we're trying to fix something. We're trying to change something. We're trying to improve something. We're trying to put effort we're trying to uh, painfully put effort. And so somehow our painful effort, our t motivation to change what it is, what it is, it's, it doesn't work. And we then as a result of that, we realize that people say, oh, it was a struggle, or oh, it was a difficult, or oh, it was a painful, or oh, I did not sleep, or oh, it was, what else I can do, you know? <laughs> so many times people will say, what else I can do? What other practice there that I can do? So in a way, it's not really what other practices you can do. It's just you should not do what you're doing, that putting that coming from place of pain and putting a lot of painful effort and trying to change something what is and trying to deny something what is trying to run away from what is and that just does not work. So I think uh, the sense of where you are, for example, as I'm sharing these experiences, this very, very moment, this very moment as I'm speaking to all of you all around the world, it, each of our state of beings is a different. Some of you have a lot of energy, some of you have less energy. I have a little bit, little jet lag. Some of you are happy, some of you are not happy, some of you are putting effort, some of you are not putting effort. But whatever it is, whatever it is, it is. And it is good. The most important part is that whatever it is, you in being aware of it, recognizing it, accepting it, accommodating it, hosting it, giving spacious, luminous, warm hug, being gentle to it, being kind to it, not analyzing it, not suppressing it, not trying to manipulate it, not trying to change it, not trying to see something wrong with it. That is what is necessary. This very moment to this very moment's experiences that you are happening. That happening to you. As I'm speaking, I'm reflect, reflecting that within myself too. I am encouraging to you all 
to reflect that in yourself too. You have an incredible, great opportunity to learn who you are, how you are being, how you are perceiving things around you and within you, how you are relating to them, what you are perceiving or what you are experiencing. It's a great opportunity to recognize your behavior toward your appearances. And that is exactly the place where we fell, everybody, we fell so frequently. We fell in the moment. There was a beautiful quote by His Holiness Dalai Lama, which was saying that somebody did a beautiful video clips that it says, there's a two things that you cannot worry. You cannot worry about your past. You cannot worry about your future because you cannot do anything about it. But what you can do, you can work in this moment. So what you can do this moment is be, recognize, be aware. So I want everybody to recognize your state of being, what you, what you are perceiving through your senses, through your mind, how you are responding to it, are you one with what you are seeing, is, is there any sense of one, oneness experiences, or there is deep separation this moment can represent your entire life your entire life how you are how you see how you perceive how you respond how you interact it's exactly you are behaving this very moment this moment is the door to your whole existence. This moment is the window to see your whole life. And this moment it's alive. It's not only the Facebook life. We are alive. I'm alive. You are alive. Now, some of you might be thinking that, wow, it's not particularly interesting this moment. Why I should know about it? Why, why I should look about it, why I should think about it, why I should reflect. It's not interesting. I don't like it. I feel pain. I feel lost. This is the same thing happening to me all the time, most of my life. It's not interesting. Why I should look at it? Maybe some of you are thinking that way. That means that is how you are thinking all the time in your life or most of the time in your life. You are not seeing them. You are not noticing them.
you're ignoring them, you're suppressing them, you're manipulating them, you're trying to change, you're trying to put effort into it, and then you're complaining, then you're not liking it, then you're getting upset with the experience, with yourself, then you are maybe even criticizing the teaching, teacher, community, people around you. You begin to blame others. So this is, I think, is a very kind of very important in some sense of a little bit of highlight. I wanted to talk a little bit about this is um, because uh, this is something that I. I feel like a very, very important. Mm. Um, I was talking a little bit about this th uh, last uh, Tuesday, that n every single experience that we have, every single experience that we have, there's nothing wrong in it. My sadness, there's nothing wrong in my sadness. My feeling agitated, there's nothing wrong in feeling agitated. My feeling anger, there's nothing wrong in feeling anger. I know sometimes there are, I saw sometimes people who, who said, well, I'm not happy with myself. I said, why are you not happy with yourself? Somebody said, oh, you know, um, I, I was driving down and I saw some beggars on in the street and I gave an apple and then I, I felt bad. I said, why? I felt bad, then I felt like I, egoistic. I felt like I'm more important, I have an apple, therefore I'm giving an apple. You see, I mean I understand the point that recognizing there is a sense of self and ego was present there, but that's not good. Good reason to be upset with yourself. It's, it makes more sense if you were to start to yell at the beggars and being being not nice to them. I can make sense, little sense makes sense a little bit more. But I, my, what I'm telling here is this person or many people, they always punish themselves, regardless of what 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 they do. They, they manage to punish themselves. So here we are saying, acknowledging your experiences, and, it, and there is a quote in the Dzogchen teaching, it says, Nyomong Tungatsao, the five negative poison is like energy. Rangsar Hrubi Tap, leaving them as they are, which means accommodating them, being aware of them, is the method. Seeing them error is a mistaken. That's important. Seeing them error is a mistaken. Or seeing them mistaken is the error. So, whatever experiences that you are having, simply being fully aware of it. Like this very moment. Simply being aware of what is what experiences is happening to you this moment. Each of these experiences either is a sadness or it's a joy. Fear or it's a confidence. Good thought or it's a bad thought. 
it's yours and therefore it's a personal experiences therefore it is important the only way you to grow or develop or transform will happen only if you recognize that there is no way to realize to transcend and to transform and to develop until you acknowledge that awareness until you recognize that there is no way and when you begin to see that way i think the most powerful thing is it, you begin to realize wow i'm feeling sad you, i've been sad for a whole week i did not recognize i've been denying i'm avoiding i'm trying to change topic i am sad and I'm aware I'm sad and it's okay to be sad I allow to feel it I be that s sky unbounded sky I be that mother to accommodate that sadness I be that sunlight to shine on that darkness ignorance causing the sadness then I realize it's not a problem to feel sad. I realize it's not only it's not a problem, but I kind of feel more space. I feel more releasing something. I feel more clearing something. I feel something it's opening something is liberating, something is transforming because I am aware of it finally because I'm facing it finally I see something clearing Not only that, maybe I am feeling some warmth in my heart. I am feeling little joy in my heart. Maybe I'm still feeling the sadness, but there's a presence. I'm with it. I feel less effortful. I feel some warmth and joy. So the ability to experience, open experience and experience the joy while you're experiencing the sadness, that is a talent. This is a gift. That means you are there with it. That means you are aware with it. That means you are connected to it. That means it's not affecting you negatively. That means it's opening another door for you. It's transcending. In a way, it's, it's self-liberating. This is called rangdo. The notion word self-liberation. It's self-liberating because you're remaining aware. So imagine, like uh, I've, I've been giving this example again and again, so imagine torch. I don't have an extra phone here or the torch here, but uh, imagine the torch. Wherever you're showing, can it be any wrong to show anywhere? I showed on object, it illuminated the object. I show in the darkness, it illuminates the darkness. 
no matter where you shine that torch, it always good. It's good on a beautiful piece of art. It's also good in the basement in a dark place where you're looking for your some looking for something. The light can never be wrong. The awareness can never be wrong. Every darkness need that awareness. Every existence in our self, in our body, it needs to be awakened, illuminated. And, and the way to do it, to learn how to be conscious of this awareness and how to shine this awareness in the world, in one's own world, within one's own world. That means in all your own experiences. So that that is a little bit like my experiences, what I was sharing earlier. It's, it's really like a sense of like the sky, the sacred space, being like a mother. For me, I felt like a mother. In a, in a way, I felt this this sacred space. In a way, more important than my mother. This moment, the sacred moment, the sacred space, is more important than, than my mother. My mother is a very important for personality me as this individual. But this sacred space, it's more important me as beyond this individuality. And rec breaking one and merging with the other seems like a fundamental, important. When you bring your attention full in your body, in your awareness, you can feel that. You can feel that. You can feel you are resting in the loving arms of Mother. This very moment, that sacred space is the Mother. You are the child. And you're resting with trust. And the moment you rest with trust in that space, you feel everything it's okay everything it's good you begin to your ability you are able you gain some kind of confidence able to see able to sorry able to look not only able to look you begin to gain power to see you don't only gain begin to power to gain to see but you begin to power to leave it as it is not run away not manipulate, not change, not put effort, not put painful efforts. And you gain the power to see what is nothing wrong. It's perfect. It's perfect. Until I label to it something wrong with it. I think there was a recently I saw in a Facebook, His Holiness Dalai Lama, one of his early teachings on a Dzogchen and a uh, lion's roar, uh, that Jeffrey Hopkins added to one of his teachings on the clear light. Beautiful teaching. And this is this, that, this, those cycle of teaching is exactly what really like important teaching, what he's, he's talking about. And this, that, those teachings are very much uh, connected to what I'm trying to say here. It's about Rikpa, it's about that mind stream, pure, pure awareness. It's something that we all, in every given moment that we experience, but we don't acknowledge enough. We always 
trying to seek something other than that. There is a great Dzogchen teaching in the Bern tradition uh, called Kapa Gukur, uh, a nine hidden, hidden cycle of teaching. Uh, in that cycle of teaching, there is a specific uh, uh, quotations. It's called Pyonyi Semi Namki Yingi Som Kaldin Semla Nime Chik Dogom. I am quoting this in Tibetan, so some of you who are familiar with probably began to think, okay, uh, you know, then you know where I'm coming from. Uh, because sometimes people begin to say, what is he talking about, you know? Or maybe some, some, sometimes people say, this sounds really interesting. Is he making it up, all these things? Where is the base? So this is called Kapagukur. And so, Pyonyi Semyi Namki Ingi Sum Kaldin Semla Nime Chik Dugum. Basically, it's saying, to the fortunate one, to the fortunate one, one who is a fortunate, sees the essence of the sky, the essence of phenomena, and essence of mind as one. Pyonyi this essence of phenomena, semi essence of mind, the nature of mind, namki yingi, the essence of the sky, it's one. As a child growing up, I'm very fascinated by that, but I also kind of clearly not know exactly what that exactly means, you know. How do you do it? What do you do it? And one time, as I've shared these experiences before, a friend of mine who, who was going through a difficult time, and she said she, she said she sat outside every morning for about half an hour, just look at the sky. I don't know if she particularly did any specific practices, but Many people do, just sitting in a, outside and just looking at the sky. And one day she did not do that, and she, she recognized that the differences between sitting for half an hour just gazing the sky and day that she did not gaze the sky, and she was feeling very different. Days she was gazing the sky, she was feeling much better, much, much more open, much more accommodating, much able to process what she is seeing and feeling the day she was not gazing the sky. But she was not particularly practicing. That's, that's the fascinating part about it. It's not like, she, oh, I got a special instruction of the sky gazing practice that I am doing this. No, nothing. She was just gazing sky like everybody does. But she was recognizing the fact of it. So that's why I was earlier, I was rec rec recommending people, but if, if sometime when you really feel like all these practices, and I mean, you know, like how many practices and teachings that you learn, it just seems like too complicated. I wonder even the teachers who teach all this complicated, do they do those practices? Everybody does something, but for sure they don't do all of that. At least I don't. But I conclude myself in certain areas of the practices, like what I'm talking right now. This I do every day. I try to integrate every day. Even in the middle of the, middle of the night, three, four in the morning with the jet lag, that's, that's what I'm experiencing, I'm sharing. I can never go one step out of this space, sacred space. I'm always in it. So, I, but I'm just seeing it, seeing it, seeing it nakedly, clearly.
So they, they, of course there is a very specific practice is called Namka Sumjurji Nyamle. Unit basically it means Namka Sumjurji Nyamle um, means uh, I say unification of three space. The, the space in the phenomena, space in the mind, space in the sky. Right this very moment, if you bring full attention, awareness to this moment in yourself, in your body, in your consciousness, around you, chairs that you're sitting, the walls that you're looking, screen that you're looking, and then this just sense of sky, beautiful sky. There is one thing in the common in all those three places. The space. The moment you are aware of that space, it becomes sacred to you. Sacred space. You are with it. Everybody who is listening here this very moment, if you are listening, if you are hearing, if you are being, if you are relating, if you are connecting, then we are sharing the same space this moment. In which we are all one. You have, you might have a glimpse of experiences of inseparable state. indestructible space. You feel the confidence of indestructible space. You feel certainty of that indestructible space. In the teachings we call Confidence of view. Tawi ding. In Tibetan we say Tawi ding. Confidence of view. Or in the Dzogchen teaching, we don't have to say only view, we can say confidence of that sacred space. We can say confidence of yourself. The one who is aware of that confidence, of that indestructible space, is the infinite possibility of transformation. Whatever is happening within you, is able to transcend and transform, because it's aware, it's illuminating every pain and darkness. The power of the awareness, the power of that light.
It's not interesting just to hear me say these things again and again. It is powerful if it is making sense to you this moment experientially. If it is not making you sense experientially this moment, then you recognize, as I was saying earlier, your pattern of disconnectedness, inability to be here and now and connect. So I want all of you for, for a moment sit in that unification of three space the sacred space in every existence every phenomena is space the sacred space in ev your own consciousness your consciousness is also the nature of that consciousness is also space or empty third the sky, the most familiar place we all know, we all love. Just feel unification of these three spaces. Be aware of your space in your body, be aware of that space in your mind, be aware of that space in, in, in objects, be aware of that space, or maybe feel the help those you're having difficult to experience, then imagine crystal clear sky in the desert. When you see it, when you feel it, when you're aware of it, feel the effect. That awareness is changing within things, within you, appearances in you is changing it. This sacred space is our inner temple. The temple, the sacred space that we have access all the time. And particularly those who are not well, those who are sick, 
those who are in pain, those who are feel the sense of loss a little bit, this moment, you don't feel that. In this sacred space, you don't feel that. With this awareness, you don't feel that. That's why this sacred space and this awareness is called inner refuge. It protects us. It always protects us. And I hope you are witnessing this moment that there is nothing wrong the experiences that you are having sadness there is nothing wrong in anger there is no, nothing wrong in those thoughts there is nothing wrong in what you are feeling there is nothing wrong that even the pain that you are experiencing The moment you stop judging pain, pain begins to release, pain begins to free. Suffering begins to clear, karma begins to purify. Let's sit, sit continuously for a moment and particularly those who are in a difficult moment, challenging moment. This is like a, a collective, a healing session for you particularly. It's for all of us but particularly those who are going through a difficult moment we all collectively dedicate to those people. Feel that dedication from us as from the Cyber Sangha. Feel, open your heart, feel that support, feel that healing. And others send that openness. Okay, so I think, uh, so briefly, I wanted to just, uh, I know that we are running out of the time, just very briefly, a few few questions. Um, maybe just I'll take the one uh, fun one. Uh, somebody asked, the jumping yaks are your students? So, uh, so basically this is the question, this is a humorous question. So my, last time I shared about I had a dream where the yaks and donkeys were from dancing on the ground and uh, jumping up on the tree and then jumping up in the sky was a lot of fun, a very entertaining dream. And somebody said, are they like a student? So I don't know, maybe it could be. They are like a, a image of some symbol of my st a student, possible. And when, when this question reminds me a very, very long time ago, um, probably over 20 some years ago, um, I had a dream, very funny dream, that I was like a little personal retreat up like in the West Virginia, um, up top in the mountains, some student have a house and I was just by myself and sleeping in a big, this living room, very open, beautiful place. 
And I had a dream that uh, in my dream I was uh, back in the monastery in uh, in India, and uh, and then there was a wall, and then I was on the top of the wall. I was looking down there. I I saw a, a group of pigs, and um, these pigs are like a kind of trying to climb up the up the wall. And and then so I look at it down there. It looked a little bit funny. And then I I look at it down there. And then they began to talk to me. And then suddenly somebody said, one of them said, "Oh, please come to teach us tomorrow morning, seven o'clock or something like that." I don't remember the exact details. But and then the other says, "No, it's not a seven. It's a come come eight or nine or whatever." There was basically these two pigs were arguing about what time tomorrow morning I should come. And I'm thinking. First, I was I was also telling them that somehow I was it was not for sure it was not a lucid dream. So it was at this that moment it was not a lucid dream. I was I was thinking these pigs. They don't get it. My point, you know. I'm I cannot do whatever time I'm supposed. They're asking. I cannot do that time. Why don't they get it? And uh, and uh, and then then they were arguing. And then suddenly. It was I. I kind of became a lucid, and it was so funny just to seeing these pigs. These pigs were arguing about my schedule, and I laughed so loud, and my laughter just basically woke me up. I'm almost like hearing this little echo because the, the kind of big big room where I was sleeping. So I I shared my. Shared my dream with the students, and one day, during during our, one of our retreats, I, I guess it was not probably pretty soon after the retreat, after I shared the dream, during one of the retreat, we all uh, as 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 usual we will all sing the Guru Yoga prayer in the beginning, and we were singing the Guru Yoga prayer at the beginning, and I was kind of uh, close my eye. And I have to be saying three times, and I open my eye. I see all those these people, like wearing a pig nose, like they just kind of totally shocked me and surprised me. Like everybody's like eh, being a pig there, yeah. so it was very very funny. So anyway, um, yeah. So this is the, like I mean that amazing thing is the dream is that just infinite possibility in the dream. So. I think we are running out of time. I'm going to. I have a bunch of other questions. So what I'm going to do, maybe in just before next Tuesday, I'm just going to quickly answer this question on uh, uh, Facebook Live. Uh, another time I will do it, but I will do it in my schedules. <laughs> Again, talking about the schedule because uh, having a very specific schedule, uh, having twice a week very specific schedule, it's a little bit tough. Tough. Trying to commit that, trying to uh, maintain that, regardless of your physical condition, where, uh, what part of the world you are in, what part, mental state you are in, and it was a little bit challenging. So sometimes uh, it's, of course, I know to do it when everybody everybody is able to take time and uh, wait for me and just that moment and then we are able to participate on live Facebook, it's a great, but sometimes it's a difficult. So I will do this question, answer, some of the answer anyway, regardless of you, uh, how many people are listening or not, then you can look back. Uh, there are some interesting questions that people have asked. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, that's all for now. So, uh, and thank you everybody and I I know a group of people, a uh, number of you are coming teaching this weekend in Paris. I'm uh, happy to see you there. And uh, some then, uh, in I will be teaching in Vienna um, and Bull. So there are a few other schedules, those you know. So, so uh, happy to see you in person. So, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. <clears throat>